I'd like to welcome everyone to our Pentecost Liturgy of the Word. Today we have with us uh, Bob Cherney, who will lead us in music. We have Natasha Randing, who will um, proclaim the God's Word. And we have Kathy Cherney, who will lead us in the prayers of the faithful and in the announcements which follow uh, follow the um, Lord's Prayer. So we'd like to begin with a statement of welcome and a land acknowledgement. We at St. Basil's Parish regard the love of God to be the foundation of all life and ministry. We believe in the ever-present love of God as witnessed through Christ and empowered by the Holy Spirit. We believe that each person is loved by God and is of sacred worth. Therefore, through God's grace, we welcome all persons to our parish. We express God's hospitality by creating a safe, healing, accessible, and transforming place, transforming place for all to enter. Further, we acknowledge with gratitude and respect that we gather here on the unceded and unsurrendered territory of the Algonquin First Nation, whose presence in this land reaches back to time immemorial. We honor their long history of welcoming many nations to this beautiful territory, and we uphold and uplift the voice and values of our host nation. Come, Lord Jesus, send us your spirit, renew the face of the earth. Come, Lord Jesus, send us your spirit, renew the face of the earth. Come to us, Spirit of God. Breathe in us now, we sing together. Spirit of hope and of light, fill our lives. Come to us, Spirit of God. Come, Lord Jesus, send us your Spirit. Renew the face of the earth. Come, Lord Jesus, send us your spirit. Renew the face of the earth. Fill us with the fire of your love. Burn in us now. Bring us together. Come to us, dwell in us, change our lives, O Lord. Come to us, Spirit of God. Come, Lord Jesus, send us your Spirit, renew the face of the earth. Come, Lord Jesus, send us your spirit, renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, who by the mystery of today's great feast make holy your whole church in every people and nation, Pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth, and with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, fill now once more the hearts of all believers. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the unity with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly, from heaven, 
there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as a fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in their own language. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God de God's deeds of power. The word of the Lord. Send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, my soul, Lord God, how great you are. How many are your words, O Lord? The earth is full of your riches. Send forth your spirit, O Lord, that we the face of the earth. You take back your spirit, they die. Returning to the dust, from which they came. You send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. Send forth your spirit, O oh Lord, and renew the face of the earth. May the Find my joy in the Lord. Send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the earth of the A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the spirit for the common good. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord.
reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. It was evening on the day that Jesus rose from the dead, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them. And he said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. My brothers and sisters, the gospel of the Lord. I'm going to share with you a few uh, words of reflection on this feast of Pentecost. This is um, a feast which concludes really all that we've been remembering and celebrating since Lent, since the beginning of Lent, the Lenten season. Then we entered into the Triduum where we remembered specifically the Paschal mystery of uh, Christ, his, his suffering, his death, his crucifixion, his rising from the dead. And last week we celebrated his ascension into heaven. And this week we celebrate what was planned all along at the culmination of all of this mystery was the descent of the Holy Spirit among the first uh, people gathered in that upper room who became the church. So often today, we often describe Pentecost as the birth of the church, or the it's the birthday of the church, when uh, God's spirit became manifest in the lives of the people who were gathered there, the disciples of Christ, who began as 12, but the reading says they were gathered, 120 were gathered. It's like God's spirit increased their membership by tenfold. Whatever God does, it increases. Now, um, what we celebrate, too, is the fact that God breathed his spirit on all of creation. It didn't begin with Pentecost. It was a continuation, a powerful continuation. But we first see God's breathing on, um, in, in the book of Genesis, when all the waters at, at the beginning were chaos and crashing. Now, if you've ever been in a boat during a storm on a lake, for instance, like I have, I, at one point I was uh, a seminarian uh, with the Bazillion Fathers, and part of our formation, uh, we could spend on a summer place, uh, which was owned by the Bazillions. It was called Strawberry Island, and the only way to get there was by boat. There were no bridges or anything like that. This was um, a summer place located in Lake Simcoe near Aurelia, and um, Anyway, many times uh, I had to be in the boat crossing when there was a storm in the, on the lake. And I can tell you there was nothing more frightening than, uh, especially someone who doesn't swim very well, I was completely terrified. Will we make it to the island without this boat capsizing? And this energy, the storm, this on the waters and the ro boat rocking back and forth and clinging on to it. This is just a small instance of what the, how the Bible begins with the waters of chaos, 
crashing waves. And then all of a sudden, God's, God breathes on these waters and there is order and there is a delaying, a, a, a calming of this energy that was in that water. And he breathes on the waters and out of it comes the, the land, the earth, the mountains, the rivers, and all that it contains. So the beginning of creation begins with God breathing, breathing uh, create, his creative breath on what we know exists today in creation. Then a few chapters later, we come to the creation of Adam. And God's breath of life enters, he breathes into the nostrils of Adam, and the human race begins. So constantly, God is breathing on the people and on creation. We see it later again, for instance, in the book of Ezekiel, when the people of God had become nothing but dry bones in the plains of the Middle East. And it was a symbolic of where they had become, what they had, what had become of them. And in his vision, Ezekiel sees God breathing on those bones and restoring them to life and recreating a new people of God, renewing the people of God, of, and, and they return to their promised land. In more recent times, we see, you know, um, what reminded me was the um, Second Vatican Council, which is often referred to as a new Pentecost, where all the bishops of the world, all of them came together, and they reflected on what is the meaning of the church in this modern age. This was 60 years ago. And great things came out of that council, a renewal in the vision of who the laity are, a vision of collegiality for the bishops. There was an understanding of holiness that resided in all religions. There was also um, a reform in how we celebrate the Eucharist. All of these things we feel were the product of the Holy Spirit in the people, in the bishops, and in the church itself, renewing it again. Now we find ourselves in a new situation today. And um, the church has always found itself. It's a dynamic community. It's organic. And there have been ups and downs across the 2,000-year span of the history of the church. And um, I'm reminded of this because Pope Innocent III in the 12th century wrote a prayer asking for God to send his spirit on the church, on this medieval church, which needed so much reform and renewal. And his prayer became the lyrics of a hymn called Vene Sancte Spiritus, which we continue to hear today in the church, come Holy Spirit. And his spirit, uh, he's praying that God renew the church. This is in the 12th century to give it new life, to give it new meaning, to give it a place for uh, people to really experience God's love in their lives. Centuries later, there was a theologian by the name of Hans Kung who adapted the, the lyrics of that hymn. And he, he said, I'm adapting it for our time. And in it, he says, Vine Sancte Spiritus, sane quod es sordidum. Come, we pray God's spirit, heal that which is wounded. And even though he wrote this several decades ago, we can still pray this prayer. We know of how much woundedness our whole planet has experienced in the past 15, 16 months. So much wounding, so much loss, the loss of lives, the loss of jobs, the loss of you know, spirit-filled hope. So this is Vene Sancti Spiritus Sane quod es sordidum, Riga quod est aridum, water that which is barren, Riga quod est aridum, water that which is barren, enliven us to become, uh, who have become resigned. That's what, refresh us with your water so that we are no longer languishing, as Sister Jean mentioned in her reflections two weeks ago people who are languishing, we need to be watered again. Flecte quod est rigidum, he says. Bend that which has become rigid. Shake out of us the feeling that we cannot change or adapt to these new situations. Give us the energy to be resilient. Fove quod est frigidum. Warm that which is cold. 
drive out our fears and our anxieties and our prejudices and our feeling of being restricted and open our hearts to your spirit. Rege quodes devium, direct what is going astray. Help us to overcome the injustices and prejudices. Help us to overcome all of those things and help us to seek your reconciliation and your peace. We know that um, through the many stories in the scriptures, that often the people come filled with hope in a time of great trauma. We see this over and over again, the trauma of the people of God being led into exile, terrible things happening, and they become filled with hope as they remember God. And um, we see that this is happening in our readings today. The, the small group of people that Jesus left are in trauma. They are feeling lost, devastated, and God breathes his spirit on them. And they become energized with fire and wind. I think when we read that first story today, when Natasha read it, we need to experience the energy in that story. You know, the wind, the violent wind rushing all over those people and the flames of fire, the fire of God's life and energy and love descending on them. That's the power of the Holy Spirit that came over those people. And they left feeling filled with hope and filled with the Holy Spirit to accomplish the mission that Jesus gave to them to finish his work on this earth. They were given languages. They were, there were many, and in this gathering, there were many ethnicities. God looked upon all of them and he didn't see their differences. What he saw were his own children, his daughters and his sons. And that's what we all are today sons and daughters of God, longing for the Holy Spirit to come upon us, especially as we languish in this period of pandemic. We need God's Spirit to help us to overcome uh, all of that we have e experienced in the past 15, 16 months. So let us allow ourselves to experience that energy and the creativity and the gifts that the Holy Spirit creates in us so that we can create a renewed church, something new, something fresh, something that comes out of this pandemic. Recently, I have uh, just very recently in the past week, I've called upon two parishioners to help me for to, to help co chair a kind of a committee, I guess you'd call it or a movement in our parish, which is the preparation for us for when the time comes that the pandemic pandemic has come to its end. And we begin this um, even before uh, it's so safe for us to come back. So I'm thinking of a process of renewal for our parish. And it's a, a time for us to harness, our mission statement says harness our gifts. We need to harness our gifts so that we can renew our own parish and fulfill um, God's own mission here on earth and among us and uh, in our neighborhood and society and for the great work that we do everywhere. So um, this Pentecost allows us to have a renewal. This is how I understand it, a renewal for our own community. There's a renewal for the church. There's a renewal for the whole world. Uh, and we, we ask the spirit, vene create spirit, come Holy Spirit, fill us with your love, fill us with your fire, your energy, to give us the ability to renew our parish, to renew the church, to renew ourselves during this uh, long and lengthy pandemic. Let us pray for God's outpouring of his Holy Spirit on the whole earth. May God heal us of all of our losses. Amen. wisdom and courage among leaders in the church who address the needs of the suffering and forgotten, we pray, Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For all world leaders, that they may always discern with a spirit of collaboration and reconciliation, we pray, Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For peace in the Middle East, we pray, Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For ongoing efforts among nations 
to help each other during this pandemic. We remember especially the people of India. We pray, Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For our parish's students preparing for their first communion and reconciliation, and the students who will be confirmed, that they will always be filled with God's spirit of compassion for their neighbor. We pray, Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For all who struggle with loneliness during this pandemic, we pray, Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For all men and women, discerning and living out their baptismal call, invocations in marriage, ordained ministry, religious life, single life, or lay ministry, and for those who journey with them, we pray, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those among us who are sick, we pray especially for Louise Harridge, Archbishop Marcel Gervais, Scotty Keogh, Scott Reed, Mary Dietrich, Judy Staniszewski, Victoria Toro, Mary Lou Ayatel, Hubert Corbier, Jeff and Nancy Clark, Yang Beilu, Shirley Armstrong, Misha Kaiser, Shea Grube, Frank Viancourt, John Dormer, John Odsent, and Joan Holman, sister of Jim Ramsey. We pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For those whom we love and have lost, we remember especially Helen Hughes, Jean Elizabeth Le Boutier, Lucas Murnahan, Kathy Bourgeois and her husband Bernie, and all who have died from the coronavirus. We pray, Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Lord God, we ask you to hear our prayers, those that we've mentioned and those that we hold in our hearts. Grant them according to your will. We make this prayer in the name of Jesus, your Son, and our Lord. Amen. And now let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Uh, the, here are this week's announcements. Thank you for joining us online for the Liturgy of the Word today. We will update parishioners soon when we learn about being able to be open for in-person Masses. Please join us for these upcoming events. Pope Francis has urged Catholics to dedicate the month of Mary to a marathon of prayer to our Blessed Mother to end the COVID-19 pandemic. Let us join this marathon. All parishioners, family and friends are invited to participate in a Zoom Marian prayer service led by the Catholic Women's League on Wednesday, May the 26th at 7 p.m. The link can be accessed from the parish's website or Facebook page. St. Basil's Parish Conversations for Our Times webinar series is pleased to welcome Cardinal Michael Cherney on Sunday, May 30th at 2.30. His webinar is entitled, Everyone and Everything Connected, Pope Francis's Vision of Our World. Again, this link can be accessed on the parish's website or Facebook page. The Multi-Faith Housing Initiative's annual Tulipathon fundraiser for low-income residents takes place next Sunday, May the 30th. Working together as the St. Basil's team, parishioners can participate in different ways. First, by taking a three kilometer solo stroll or household hike whenever you like and ask people to sponsor you. Second, by donating directly to the Tulipathon through St. Basil's online donation link, or by donating by phone or by mailing a check to the multi-housing initiative. Please consult the St. Basil's Bulletin or the website for the contact details.
Let us pray. O God, you bestow heavenly gifts upon your church. Safeguard, we pray, the grace you have given, that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her poured out upon her may retain all its force, that this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. And we pray that all unity may one day be restored. And we'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. We will work with each other. We will work side by side. We will work with each other. We will work side by side. And we'll guard each one's dignity and save each person's pride. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. By our love, yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. All praise to the Father from whom all things come, and all praise to Christ Jesus, his only Son, and all praise to the Spirit who makes us one, and they'll know. We are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we 